Welcome to the EDA calibration training exercises. We're really happy to be here with you today. My name is Gina Almarico. I'm the Director of Educator Preparation Programs here at the University of Tampa. I want to share a little bit about my background. Um, I have extensive experience in program approval, review, and assessment. I sit on uh, state evaluation and national program evaluation teams. So that's my area of expertise is in uh, evaluating programs much like yours. Uh, I'll let my colleague introduce herself to you. Hi, I'm Patty Johnston. I have a PhD in measurement and research. So the psychometrics behind a test when constructing a test is my area of specialty. It's so fun. <laughs> so today we're going to talk to you about our tool which we developed and it is a tool to measure dispositions. It's a valid and reliable tool proprietary that can be used uh, in programs across our country to meet all kinds of standards. All right, so this is the webinar goals today. We're going to take a look at what these goals are. But before we hop into those goals, I want to share with you the intent of our calibration training webinar. What we're going to be doing today is giving you, the participant, an opportunity to score a series of scenarios that we've identified and created through our research and through interviews with university supervisors, cooperating teachers. And we're gonna have you read these scenarios, rate these scenarios against our tool, and then compare your ratings with expert ratings to see how your ratings match or align. Uh, it's important that you get a, a full and accurate feel for rating because it'll make you feel that your ratings are reliable and accurate when you're measuring students for admission, as you're tracking and monitoring, and to make sure that uh, you're meeting CAPE approval standards. The EDA instrument itself is a really versatile tool. We've used it for seven years in our program, and it's the type of tool that serves several functions. One way to use the EDA is if you have a student of concern. For instance, if you have a student in either a course or in a clinical placement who is demonstrating dispositions that don't quite feel right, you can delve into the tool, rate that student, and then submit it to the people at your, uh, your APP, whether it be the chair who then calls the student in or a committee who then calls the student in and works on an intervention plan. The thing that's really good about our tool is that it, the, the dispositional ratings are actionable. And that's super important that if you have a student who's demonstrating ineffective or inappropriate dispositions, that you can intervene with an actionable plan. So that's one way to use the tool. We're recommending that you use it programmatically. In other words, at certain checkpoints through your program, at the admissions checkpoint as part of the admissions process, to track them as they're moving through the program, and then again toward the end of your program to ensure that they indeed can demonstrate the important dispositions for uh, the teaching profession. The nine dispositions in our tool are listed on this slide. The, the dispositions were uh, identified through a meta-analysis of the research as, as well as uh, talking with subject matter experts. There are nine dispositions in all in our tool with 27 associated indicators of those dispositions that you'll notice as you look at the tool and we work through it today. The administration of our instrument is enhanced when you have a clear and collective understanding of our three scoring levels that we use and we'll look at that in just a second. But it's also important that you have a really strong understanding of the operational definitions of the nine dispositions. There's a couple of ways to, to acquire that. One is through looking through our EDA technical guide, which your institution received upon adoption. In there, in that guide, we have all the psychometric properties of the tool that Patty oh, uh -huh. developed, and we also have operational definitions of the dispositions. Another way to get a really good feeling for the dispositional uh, descriptors is to look at the indicators in the tool. And that'll also help define what we mean by each of the uh, dispositions at the indicator level. The calibration exercises that we're going to be doing today are based on the work of Wasisco, where he did some work on uh, calibration exercises back in 2002. The three scoring levels that are part of our tool are across a Likert scale, starting with needs improvement, 
which indicates that if you have a student that is not demonstrating those dispositions, you would mark them with a, with a needs improvement. As you look into the tool, you see the disposition listed across the top with the little indicators and boxes. You would mark each indicator as you are rating that student. So if a student has any issue with that disposition, needs improvement would show that they that's where they need to be marked. Then developing is next, and then finally meets expectations would show that they do possess a strong understanding of the disposition based on their behavior. So the next steps, the EDA technical guide, as we mentioned, offers a very in-depth description of the nine dispositions, how we develop them, how the tool came together. How to teach them. How to teach them, that's right. We have a teaching component of that. Um, and then we also have a, a timeline in there of when to do the disposition tool. But you wanna make sure right now, in front of you, you have a hard copy of the EDA. Uh, in Watermark, you'll be doing this electronically, but for today's exercise, let's have a hard copy in front of you and a scratch piece of paper for recording scores. Uh, and then you can write on your scratch sheet of paper. So now we're gonna hop right into the actual calibration training. We want you to remember that the Likert scale has three components, needs improvement, developing, and meets expectations. And Patty, you have a nice way of thinking about what those three levels are. Okay, I think about it, to, to make it a little easier, two is great, no problem. One is teachable. Not, uh, you you want to do something about it. You don't want to ignore it. Three, uh, zero is actionable. What that action is depends on the severity or the egregiousness of the dispositional issue. So if you look at it, Actionable, teachable, great. Yeah, good. All right, so the steps for the training are gonna be this. We're gonna lead you into each of the scenarios. We'll give you a little bit of an introduction. Then we want you to pause it, pause your video, and carefully read the scenario. Look into the tool, read over the indicators for each of the different um, dispositions, and then rate how you would rate that student based on your best judgment. And then after that, play the tape again, and we're going to share with you our rating. Keep track of how often your rating matches ours. We're hoping for at least an 80% agreement um, with our ratings and your ratings. So that would mean that you really, really are, are doing a good agreement with what the experts are saying, how this particular disposition should be rated. And if you don't get to 80%, we have more exercises for you. That's right. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get started, I want you to know that these scenarios are from our actual practice. We've kind of deliberately not made it given you super easy ones to do because there's, there's nothing to be gained there. These are generally when you read them in your head, you're going to be saying, oh, is this a zero or a one or a one or a two? not very clear cut, um, which is mirrors true life. So the first scenario, oral, um, oral communication, take a minute and read it. This one, I give you a hint that there is little grammatical errors in subject verb agreement, just in case you want it easier. So take a minute to read it. And then pause your tape. Okay, we gave this I'm crossing my fingers for you, a one. Teachable, not actionable. This, this isn't so horrible that somebody would have to go in front of a committee and come up with a plan to do anything, nor is it um, high level. So it's somewhere in the one zone. When you're looking at communication skills, whether oral or written, you always want to look at how severe are the errors and how frequently do we see them. Okay, the next scenario, written communication. I like this one. Um, take a minute and read it. Okay, we rated this a zero. This was, gosh, if you could rate something 0.5, maybe we would have rated it 0.5. We, we rated it zero because of the tone that it was evidenced in the passage. And there is never any excuse for one of our teaching candidates to 
give a tone and a correspondence to their cooperating or supervising teacher. It, it, it's, it's actionable. They need to know that that's kind of a big deal and we don't want it repeated and... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the next one deals with demonstrating professionalism. Uh, go ahead and take a minute to read this. This took place in a clinical setting and then pause the tape after you, and give yourself a chance to rate it. All right, we rated this as developing. Uh, context could affect this rating uh, by simply looking at the scenario. You might think, oh my gosh, is this the second time she was supposed to turn things in and they were late? Uh, but maybe it was the fifth or eighth or ninth time. So it may not be happening often. But if it starts to be a pattern, a repeated pattern, then we need to look at uh, coming in for some actionable uh, interventions. All right. The next one also deals with professionalism. Take a minute to read this and then pause your tape. I'll remind you that this is from real life experience, unfortunately. All right, we rated this as developing because although the candidate should not ever engage in inappropriate conversation, we don't know the relationship between the candidate and her cooperating teacher. Also of note is that students were not present at this time. If the cooperating teacher felt awkward about this exchange or it was something that she felt they weren't quite there in that relationship, it might warrant a zero. But we're thinking we don't want to read too much into it. There were no students there. Maybe they had this great relationship, but we still need to remind our candidates that they are in a professional setting uh, and should engage in professional dialogue. All right, the next one is a scenario that deals with the next disposition of positive and enthusiastic attitude. Here we have a student uh, sharing work and accomplishment with a student teacher. Go ahead and read it. Pause and rate. This one received a developing. And the reason we gave this a developing is that we felt like the, the intern kind of fit, had a failed opportunity. She lost a, a, an opportunity to give this student positive feedback. If this is a student who had clearly been struggling and worked so hard and was so proud of the work they had done, and it was kind of dismissive but not horribly dismissive, you just need to have more affect when you teach. So that's something we need to spend some time talking about. You don't want to overlook an opportunity to give a student um, a, a appropriate praise. All right, this next one takes place in a clinical setting. It's a little bit longer. Um, take a minute to read it, then pause, and we'll share with you our rating. This is a really tricky one. Uh, we gave this a needs improvement. And you might say, yeah, well, but you know, the student was sitting in the meeting and she wasn't belligerent, but she sat and she listened, but she did not implement. So sometimes just the ability to sit there, that's, that's nice, but you have to be able to follow through with the suggestions that are given. And so that's why this got a needs improvement. There was absolutely no improvement shown during the observ observation. There have been people that have said, well, wait a minute, maybe she doesn't have the ability to make those improvements. Ah, well then look into the tool and you will see that the student would then definitely be marked a needs improvement. You need to do some type of intervention. If after extensive conversation with a the student, there's no improvement, it's definitely time for an intervention. Okay, okay back to me. Our diversity scenario, take a minute and read this. Okay, this, this wasn't hard for us. This is a zero. There is sin and omission. Um, it's just not allowed. You gotta, yeah, you, you, zero tolerance for this kind of thing. The next scenario is about collaborating effectively. Again, I'll remind you, these are from actual practice, unfortunately. 
we gave this a zero because respectful dissent is essential to any collaborative effort. And if you don't have that, it's actionable. All right, so the next one, disposition, deals with self-regulated learner behavior and taking the initiative. Um, take a minute and read this, and then we'll share our rating with you. This was rated a one for developing. The rating would have been a two if the question was super, super difficult that the intern went to the uh, university, I mean, the cooperating teacher with, and if that really warranted assistance. The rating would have been a zero if the candidate was always asking questions. It could easily be answered if they just looked it up. So we gave it a one. You want to share what principles have shared with us? Well, the principles, so every step of the way, we have contacted expert opinion on this. And principals are crazy about this one. When we did our interviews with our relevant stakeholders, the principal said, sometimes I feel like I spend my entire day answering questions that could be answered by the person asking the question. So mm -hmm. that's just a little note for your back pocket. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the next one, also dealing with self-regulated learner behavior and taking the initiative, this scenario takes place and a diagnostic reading course where the student has been given the assignment to do the research, deal with a struggling reader, find ways to teach this struggling reader, and then write up the report of what happened after a series of tutorials. Go ahead and read this it's a little bit longer and then rate it and we'll share with you. All right, so this is a one that meets expectations. They earned a rating of a two. This type of student is the type of student we all love to have in our classes. They effectively research. They looked at reading challenges and how to deal with students who have reading challenges. They listed their resources. They implemented effective strategies and uh, shared that eloquently in their written communication with the professor. So these are the kind of students yeah. we like. We wanted to throw a two in there for you. There really isn't a lot of value in putting a lot of twos in this uh, calibration training because twos are kind of easy. It's getting between what's a zero and a one that's hard. Yeah, great, great teaching is obvious. You know it when you see it. And this is a student who definitely had their act together. The next one, uh, this deals with exhibiting social and emotional intelligence and competence to promote personal educational goals. That's the next disposition. Uh, this takes place in a clinical setting where the cooperating teacher feels as though this intern needs more assistance in learning how to positively engage with students. So the cooperating teacher called the university supervisor in and there's a three-way conference happening. So go ahead and read it and rate. All right, so this particular student would have earned a zero uh, based on this particular incident. Their outburst, her outburst, showed that she did not have emotional maturity or emotional regulation. She could not respond in a socially acceptable manner. Her questioning of, do you hate me, is actually a bit outrageous. And, and getting up and walking out of a conference uh, is totally unacceptable. So she uh, demonstrates the inability to have emotional regulation. This actually happened. The student was indeed asked to leave after this conference, and this was kind of near the end of an internship uh, where the student had been demonstrating some kind of questionable behavior, but we were working with her and intervening. But at this point, the cooperating teacher had enough and asked the student to leave. Um, and we, again, tried to intervene and work with this student, work with this student, and she eventually just left our program. All righty, so those are the rest of uh, our extra calibration trainings, but we're hoping that you, as you measured your ratings against ours, earned close to an 80% or an 80% or higher with your ratings. Uh, if you have any questions, there's our information down there that you can contact us. We appreciate you participating in this and look forward to working with you in the future. Bye. Bye. Have a good day.